Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the Heirloom Art Studio. Or should I say, I'm welcoming myself back because if you hadn't noticed, we've been offline for about four months. I had uh, two cataract surgeries, in e one in each eye, and it took many months to get my eyes, my brain, and my stomach to all talk nice to each other so that I could see. Now, the big problem was that they took away my close-up vision. So, I can see 2010. I didn't even know that existed. Apparently, I see better than anyone that sees 2020. I can count the leaves on the trees, but anything up to four feet in front of me is out of focus, completely out of focus. So, I can't even see Hmm, my hand in front of my face until, ooh, maybe we don't want to see my hand in front of my face. Look at all the wrinkles. Hmm, oh well, what can you do? So, two tries later, we finally got glasses and clear on the top and focusing on the bottom and so we can see what we're doing here. So, Again, welcome back to our Tuesday at 10 live presentation. We've got some exciting things going on here at the studio. We have a lot of uh, equipment on its way. We are going to uh, do some new broadcasting uh, uh, events. And in order to do that, again, we needed to institute some uh, new equipment and new policies and whatnot. So I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But let's pick up where we left off. When we were last together, we were talking about value. All right, there's a video online called um, 50 Shades of Grey. And as we talked about, no such thing. All right, here we have 10 Shades of Grey. And we were talking that um, if you are drawing or painting... And you do not use a large number of values. If you're using only black, you're going to have what is called a cartoon. Even though we would call this a sketch or a drawing or a layout or a, a whatever, anytime there's an outline, it's called a cartoon. It comes from a long, long time ago. And that's also why we call the, the, the old Sunday Funnies, if you <clears throat> are <clears throat> of that time period. Um, we call those the, the, the cartoons because they are just line drawings. You will not have any value. You will not have any realism. There will not be any depth if you're only using black or only using a small number of values. Here we have a very, very limited palette. We don't have real depth. We don't have real, we, we, we've got white, we've got beige, we've got some gray, we've got some dark, but we don't have a lot of realism. The more values you have, the more realistic your painting or drawing is going to be. Believe it or not, you, you'll lose some things here on video, but believe it or not, there are 17 values here and you can see that you could probably make at least five more in this range. The more photographic something is, the more realistic it's going to look because it's going to have a full range of value. Now, why was that important, all right? Because we were talking about how to get total realism in your painting or drawing. But what happens if the object is shiny? Now the rules change. When we go to something shiny like fabric, This is a perfect example of when the values change. If it's very dull and not very shiny, like velvet. Velvet does not reflect. So, whoops. <laughs> There's a reason for that. All right. Velvet does not reflect. There are no key highlights in a velvet. 
if it's if it's um, what we call a slub uh, fabric, a very low low pile, um, and you're only going to get a certain amount of highlights and midtones and darks. Here we have something that is a little bit more shiny, a little bit more sheen. There's a whole science to velvet. And we have some very high key highlights and it's starting to get more and more contrasty. But look what happens when you get into the satins. The value scale is completely thrown out because shiny objects are high contrast highlights against high contrast darks. Now, in order to figure this out, you're going to need to put something in front of you that's very, very shiny. For instance, if I tip up and you see that the lights, my stage lights, are shining on my glasses, what do you see? You see dramatic highlights against dramatic darks. Whereas my face is not shiny, hopefully, and it's going to have a full range of values from highlight through shadows when you're painting. So if you study your shiny object, you're going to find that it's almost geometric. Look at the, look at the shapes that are created here. Look at here, it's kind of like a, kind of like a big Y. And it's white against dark against a mid-tone. This section kind of rolls in a highlight to shadow because the light is not as dramatic up here. This section, a little rolly, but your shiny objects are dramatic light against dramatic dark. Let's take a look at a really good example. I love this picture. Actually, I love this tea set. Mm. I'm very old school. All right, look at that. Now, silver is the, mo is the perfect thing to look at. If you can find anything in metal, it's, it's the perfect thing to study. And if you start studying the geometric shapes, the pulls, the, the black, Y that's uh, a V that's in here and the circles and the triangles and then notice if you can I'm not sure if we can see this but look at the orange cast the orange and green cast in our silver from whatever was out there when it was reflect when it was photographed so you have to study, you have to see, you have to look, but remember that shiny things do not go from highlight to shadow. They go highlight, shadow, dark, light, mid-tone. And you have to look, you have to see, you have to look at it, you can't make it up in your head. The other thing that is shiny is water. Water is difficult to paint, most people will say. All right. It uh we're going to have we'll have a lesson on water. We'll talk about water someday, but for right now, keep in mind that water is a reflective object. Also geometric. And I actually took this photograph. And if you notice, your key highlights, your brightest highlights, are in shapes. These highlights are blue, so they're just a little bit down, but everything rotating and swirling is in geometric shape and color and value and highlight against dark. If this was blues and greens, blue and green being almost identical values, if you were to photograph a painting 
of blue and green. We talked about this in another video. I used to keep a Polaroid camera, a black and white Polaroid camera. And I, on my students, they'd say, oh, I'm finished. And I would photograph it in black and white. And then I would tell them to stand back about 10, 15 feet. Can you see the subject matter? Does it make sense? Hmm, no, it's kind of all gray. Then you need to bump up the highlights and the shadows. So water is treated geometrically, all these shapes, and highlight against dramatic shadow. Then you have other concerns like what is reflecting up here. You know, is this a house up there or a tree up there? And then you have mutations. Like I said, we're going to do a thing on, on um, water at some point. So given that, I'm not sure. Um, the, the current uh, series that I'm working on is called The Color Collection. Every painting is based on um, a color in the color wheel, which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and technically violet, not purple, um, and black, white, and brown. This painting is, let me get it out here, there we go, and there's probably going to be some glare, a little glare up here from the lights. Let's see if I can tilt that just a bit. All right, this painting is red. It is on the website, uh, katherinerutherford.com. It is called Release of Innocence. If the shadows were not showing, we have the cranes coming out of the wallpaper, out of the Victorian wallpaper, which, trust me, took me longer to paint the wallpaper than it did the whole painting. And the, the cranes are leaving. And also in another video, we talked about personal interpretation. Everyone has their own idea of what this painting means. And I'm going to leave that to your imagination because um, I, know what it, I know what it was and I know what it means, uh, but whatever it means to you as the viewer and or the collector and the buyer, that's what's important. But here we have a basic study of fabric, classical painting, um, going back to my art history uh, degrees and my study of, of different time periods. And we have velvet, chaise lounge, which do not reflect much. So the highlights and the shadows tend to be very soft, not key and not, and not bouncing unless there's dramatic, dramatic light. Here we have this semi-satin outfit. And, and again, it's semi, which means it's not white, 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 but we have light against dark. And here we have something that's much softer, not as shiny. So we don't see bright highlights and we do see highlight to shadow. So for, for a better idea, you can go to, the, like I say, you can go to the website, uh, katherinerutherford.com to see this painting it is available as sold as the original as well as prints now let's talk about what's coming up um in the past especially with the white painting i showed the progression of the paintings i love doing that i love I've, i photograph at the end of every day that i'm working and then I like to put it online so that you can watch what's happening over the day. I don't usually paint live because it's such a slow process, but uh, we will be doing some of that in the future. But every day I will post a painting, uh, um, the day's progress of the next painting. And I'm going to tell you that the next painting uh, is black. It was the last one I finished before I had my surgery. I have uh, one finished since then and uh, three on the go at the same time. So, but this time, instead of asking you what you think it's going to be, I'm going to tell you ahead of time. So that once you know what the painting is or represents to me, you can still interpret what it means to you 
but you're going to then see the progression of the painting day after day after day as I'm working on it. So that is coming up. Now, we are, I currently, well, let's backtrack. We all know that our shows and our events, hi, Patty. <laughs> uh, guess what? I can see my, my, I can see my thing and I can see some comments. Ugh, couldn't do that before. So comments are, comments are now in focus. Uh, I, we all know that our shows and our events and everything was canceled this year. Three of my shows were, one was just, they said, that's it, we're done. And they kept our money, which was not fair, but oh well. Uh, one of my shows in October was to open in Pennsylvania. And this is a, it's called the IX Arts. IX as in Roman numerals, meaning it used to be a lexicon. That's where it came from. But the IX show was to open in Pennsylvania, and it is a show of original art only. You can sell prints and, and merchandise, but the primary goal of the show was to sell original art. And I was graciously invited to be in the showcase, which is the sort of sideshow. It's not the big event. It's, it's the um, um, smaller show. And the show was to open October 21st. Now, the promoters of this show know how to do it right. And they went online. They put the entire show. You can go to ix-arts.com. All the artists are there. Big people, uh, famous people, little people like me. Um, there is some magnificent work up there. It is a lot of fantasy, a lot of um, unique art and whatnot, and everything is for sale. This show, they, have, they, it was, they are doing this for us completely free. So we are online, again, ix-arts.com. Everyone is online. Go take a look at the show. The show opened October 21st, and within two hours, I had sold my first painting. Originals. That's, that's just huge. The show is going to stay online until March. Again, these people are doing this just for us artists. They are fabulous people. And an additional thing that they did was ask us to create studio hours. We can do whatever we want. If we want a Zoom room, a Google Meet, a Facebook Live, whatever. Now, until I get my new equipment, we're not gonna be really dramatic, but I am online to visit with you for free every Thursday between four and five o'clock and every Saturday, Eastern time, and every Saturday between 10 and 11 o'clock. Now, right now, I've only got one camera, so it's going to be a meet and greet. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be working. You can pop in. There will be a link. If you go to the show and go to my art booth, you will actually see the link, but I'll be posting the link on Facebook every, every week in preparation for every day. Doesn't matter where you live in the world, because I know I have a couple of people in England that are really dying to get together with me and bugging me about classes. Yes, Steve, they're coming. I'm working on them. Trust me. And But you can pop into my studio. You can say hi. If you're a relative, you can send hugs, please. If you are working as an artist and you are working on a project of any kind, show me. We can talk about that. If you're struggling, maybe we can you know, give you a couple of hints. Um, just hang out for an hour on Thursday and an hour on Saturday. So look for the posts. I hope you'll pop in. Uh, I'm currently using Google Meet, which is uh, a wonderful, wonderful way to get together with people. Um, if you need me to tell you how to do that, just write in the comments and, and I'll tell you. Uh, again, if you're watching this after in a replay, please put the hashtag, the, the number sign, and the word replay. Facebook loves that. They're going to push this video out to more people. 
If you've got a comment, um, a question, type it in the comments and I will answer your questions when we're offline. So I hope you um, are glad that I'm back. I know I am. And as I say, we've got some exciting things coming up. Uh, spent a great deal of money to get some new cameras and some new equipment and some new things in, in here so that you can share what I'm doing or I can share what I'm doing with you. So the sun is out. It's a nice cool breeze, fall breeze. I hope you're having a good day where you are. And remember, I'm going to be back online on Thursday at four o'clock. Until then, thanks for popping in. Bye-bye.